open source is great and you probably shouldn't contribute to it. I know, spicy take, y'all are gonna have some feelings about this one, but this isn't a clickbait video. I do actually believe that most developers probably shouldn't be contributing to open source or at the very least setting open source contributions as a goal. We're gonna take a bit of a weird journey, but I think it will highlight why I feel so strongly about this and also help developers both new and seasoned in bettering themselves. Well, why am I talking about this? As per usual, I saw a tweet. This tweet frustrated me, not because of the tweet itself, the tweet was fine, but the responses that I was seeing to it. Flavia found a post on the React subreddit from a beginner asking for help finding repos with good issues for a first time contributor. They specifically said they didn't want repos that use TypeScript because they didn't want to learn TypeScript. All of the replies were learn TypeScript. People were upset that this is the TypeScript cabal pushing so hard to convince everyone to use their language and looking down on those who don't. And I'll admit, I accidentally fed into this a bit because I didn't realize that's what people were misreading. I called out the issue I saw here, which was about beginners desperately trying to sneak in open source contributions. But since I use the word TypeScript here, specifically I said, if they still see TypeScript as a hurdle, there'll be a massive burden to whatever project they contribute to. That's a fact. I'm not going to debate that. Let me know in the comments that I'm wrong because that's not what this is actually about. And I think if I show you the real Reddit post, you'll understand just what I mean here. Here's the original post everyone is replying to. Trying to find some good project without TypeScript to contribute. Can someone help me in finding a good open source project in React without TypeScript, which contains good first issues for a beginner to start, as I need to start doing open source, but can't find the suitable project. Do y'all see the problem here? As I need to start doing open source. Nobody needs to start doing open source. This is why I am so very specifically frustrated. And you can even see their replies down here. Here it is. When you do open source, your debugging skills improve and everything like networking, which can be good for referrals, attract interviewee when they see a big contribution in open source and scope of learning is high. This sounds like either he chat GPT'd, why should I do open source? Or just read a list of the things you should do to get your first tech job. This sucks, like genuinely, because open source was never about helping somebody get started with dev. Open source is about sharing contributions to things you use so others can use them and benefit from them as well. And if you don't know which projects you should be contributing to, it's because the cart's being put before the horse here. Obviously, contributing to open source does help with getting jobs. As a hiring manager, if I can look at your GitHub and see a lot of contributions, read through the code and see that you know what you're doing, that builds a level of trust that I couldn't have otherwise gotten without having worked with you in the past. But I feel like the cart's getting put before the horse here because the open source contributions aren't valuable because they exist. They're valuable because they show that you've run into real problems with software. Not only did you have those problems, you fixed them and have been part of the community in that way. Contributing code also isn't the only way to make a splash via GitHub. If you're showing up cutting issues that describe problems in detail, especially if you bring reproduction steps with it, that's huge. Being able to articulate problems well and show that you are in the trenches, you are out here writing code, is way more valuable than convincing some repo to accidentally merge one of your weird pull requests. And this is why I'm so frustrated, because we're holding the idea of open source contributions as this holy grail that gets you a job. But that's not how it works. If you're struggling to figure out which projects to contribute to, you shouldn't be contributing yet. The best project to contribute to is the one that you use, you have a problem with, and you've looked through the source code and think you might be able to solve it. And even then, you should be starting with an issue, not with a bunch of code that you're hoping somebody will take the time to mentor you through fixing. Open source is not a place to go for free mentorship. Open source is not a place to go to get a free job. Open source is an ecosystem of people working really hard to keep the web and all of software development alive. It is not her job to mentor you at the same time. I'm not saying you can't get good mentorship in open source and that there aren't people in open source who will do mentorship when people start contributing. I've even done this with the contributors both to Create T3 app and Upload thing. Create T3 app has over, I think, 300 contributors now, half of which are first time open source contributors. That's huge, but that's because they use the project, they had problems with it, or they saw issues they knew how to solve, but it started with using the project, not with wanting open source contributions. And if your goal is just contributing to open source, you've entirely lost the plot. And that's what I saw when I saw this Reddit post. It was somebody who didn't want to learn. They didn't want to improve their skills. They didn't want to do the hard thing. They wanted to use open source as a hack to get a job. And that is incredibly toxic and will actually destroy open source if we're not careful about how we recommend these things. I called this out on Twitter because I think it's incredibly toxic to push new developers to open source as though they'll get free mentorship and jobs. That's not 
how open source works. Most open source developers and maintainers are already struggling to keep their projects afloat under the weight of all the issues and PRs and random nonsense that they're getting, especially now that we're seeing a surge of AI generated pull requests and nonsense. If you're a new developer showing up on an empty GitHub account, making a bunch of PRs with code that, we'll be honest, isn't great yet because you're still new, it's going to do nothing but frustrate the maintainers and frustrate yourself as well now that you're wasting all of this time. What if you just cut issues on the things you use? This is what I'm trying to push this whole time. So how do we get here? Why are there so many devs that think open source contributions are this magic trick in order to get a job? Well, I think there's one event that led to a lot of these problems, an event hosted by DigitalOcean every year named Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest started all the way back in 2013 as a collaboration between DigitalOcean and GitHub. This was actually before GitHub was owned by Microsoft, so the Azure DigitalOcean competition wasn't really something they worried about. The inaugural Hacktoberfest was a modest affair. Participants were challenged to make at least four pull requests to open source repos on GitHub during the month of October. In return, they would receive a limited edition Hacktoberfest t-shirt as a token of appreciation for their contributions. The event attracted a few hundred participants in its first year. The problem with this wasn't that they encouraged open source or that they gave out free t-shirts. Actually, pretty cool. It was a small thing for open source maintainers to encourage them to contribute to more different projects and get out decent few PRs in a given month. Cool idea. I appreciate the sentiment. I see what they were trying to do here but it very quickly exploded and caused many more problems than it solved. In 2020, open source maintainers were getting tired of the low quality contributions that tended to come through the Hacktoberfest goals. When you set a goal as arbitrary as get four pull requests merged, the result isn't people being very careful and meticulous with the four PRs they cut. The result is people spamming repos with dozens of PRs making single line fixes or changes or just having their own opinions about grammar in hopes somebody will merge it so they can hit that threshold and be a member of Hacktoberfest. Fest. I really like how it's put in this article by Dominic. In reality, Hacktoberfest is a corporate sponsored distributed denial of service attack against the open source maintainer community. So far today, on a single repository, myself and fellow maintainers have closed 11 spam pull requests. Each of these generates notifications, often email, to the 485 watchers of the repository. And each of them requires maintainer time to visit the pull request, evaluate its spamminess, close it, tag it as spam, lock the thread to prevent further comments, and then report the spammer to GitHub in the hopes of stopping their time-wasting rampage. The rate of spam pull requests is four per hour, and it's not even October yet. Yeah. Another article. Let's see it. Somebody even made a Twitter account called Shittoberfest, where they document the crap PRs people are filing during Hacktoberfest. It's hilarious just how bad things were. In the title, please accept my pull request. I will get a free t-shirt. Please request. Duh. God. This was so bad. It was so bad. I don't think we appreciate just how bad this got. And it, to me, it highlights the size of this problem. When you have a bunch of people who don't understand open source and you tell them that it's this magic thing that gets them something, be it a t-shirt or a job, you end up with nonsense. To be very, very clear, I'm not saying you shouldn't contribute to open source if you have a problem with something that happens to be open source or you see an opportunity in a project you're familiar with to make a meaningful contribution. I think you should start with issues. But in order to start with an issue, you have to use the thing enough to have an issue with it. In order to use the thing to have issues, you should be building stuff. And this is where my constant rant comes back. The best way to get better at coding is to code more, build stuff, solve problems that you understand. Let's say you're really into Minecraft. Maybe make a web app to keep track of the different things you're mining or how close you are to specific goals. Or you're really into sports. Make a website for tracking your favorite sports team scores at different events. There's a lot of things you can do that might not be perfect, but solve a problem you understand well enough to know if your solution's working or not. And once you start doing that, you'll almost certainly use open source projects. And once you start doing that, you'll certainly start to run into problems. Good open source contributions don't come from the goal of contributing to open source. They come from an understanding of what the project does that you're contributing to. And this is what I mean when I say the cart before the horse. The horse is having a problem with some open source software. The cart is the fix that you created to that problem or even just the issue you cut about it. But if you put the cart in front, which is the goal of open source contributions, you're not gonna get anywhere. You're just gonna sit there refusing to learn TypeScript for some reason and not progressing. And I see this a lot. This is why I made my goal setting video because developers set really bad goals, especially new developers. Goals like make an open source contribution or learn JavaScript kind of suck because you don't understand either of those things well enough to know when you've achieved it. Goals come from things you understand, not things you don't. Start with something you understand, be it a video game you play, a random app you want to recreate, something that you know, so you know when it is or isn't working, and work backwards from there. But if you're starting with something you don't understand as your goal, you're never going to get there. And I've seen so many devs spiraling in circles around this. 
That's all I think I have to say here. Appreciate y'all a ton. Check out my video about goal setting if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, nerds.